one thing I've been kind of teasing a lot about or talking a lot about has been finally cracking into some Chaos Dwarf lore. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to start our kind of slow trudge down the giant rabbit hole that is the Tamarcon, the previous editions and White Dwarf releases of the Chaos Dwarves. And we're going to do it in the typical way we've been doing it for some of our other suspected Total War Warhammer 3 races. We're going to talk about a legendary lord. So today we're going to talk about Drazhoeth the Ashen. And in this, we'll talk about some of the Chaos Dwarf special rules that, that apply to the race as a whole, but obviously to Drazhoa himself, as well as um, some kind of speculation I have for how they might create or, or, or put Chaos Dwarves into the game. So, as always, guys, let's jump into this lore blurb from the Tamarcon book for Drazhoa the Ashen. Sorcerer, Prophet of Hashet, Lord of the Black Fortress, Master of the Legion of Azor. For more than a thousand years, the dark, burning spire of the Black Fortress has stood sentinel over the crossing place of the River Ruin at the southern edge of the Mountains of Morn and guarded the border of the Chaos Dwarf Empire of Ash and Suffering. It is a nightmarish place of soot, blackened iron, and jagged rock, and burning magma runs through it like lifeblood. For centuries, the masters of this dark domain and the warriors and slaves that inhabit it has been Drazoeth the Ashen, a twisted, power-hungry creature and potent sorcerer. Drazoeth was first sent to the Black Fortress in an effective exile after losing favor in the brutal politics of Tsar Nagrand as a minor hellsmith, but has since risen to become its lord through his innate cunning and bitter, ruthless ambition. In battle, Drazoeth is both a mighty sorcerer and an able warrior who leads his war hosts from the fore mounted upon the great Taurus Cinderbreath bringing fire and ruin down upon the enemy. Drazhoeth's power has grown over the decades, and there are few sorcerers now in the service of Hashut who can match him in arcane might or knowledge in the creation of war machines and demon binding. He also has undisputed mastery of the Legion of Asgore, a potent army of Chaos Dwarfs and Hobgoblin slave soldiers based at the Black Fortress, whose duty it is to raid across the river and patrol the savage wastes of the Southern Darklands to maintain the Chaos Dwarfs' tentative domain over the deadly monster-plagued expanse. But for all his power and the forces at his command, Dreshoeth is all too keenly aware that he has reached an impasse, and his black-hearted ambition can take him no further. For the Black Fortress is many leagues away from the center of the Chaos Dwarf Empire at Tsar Nagrand, and it is ill-regarded. The voices of this Lord of Exiles carries little weight with the great conclave of Hashut's priesthood, and in particular none with Astragoth, Iron Hand, the oldest and most powerful living sorcerer of Tsar Nagrand, and the master who sent Drazoeth into ex internal exile long ago. Astragoth is ancient beyond measure, though, and at last his powers have begun to wane. He is kept mobile only by sorcerous mechanisms of his own dark design, and so Jazoeth's dreams of a triumphant return to Tsar Nagrand are slowly kindled in his spiteful breast. Jazoeth needs, above all, a great victory to seal his prominence for when Astragoth finally falls, and a great flow of fresh captives and plunder into the coffers of the Chaos Dwarf Empire would go far to expand his influence beyond his own blighted domain. This, however, is not proving to be such an easy ambition for Jazoeth to achieve, thanks to the enemies which continually beset the Black Forest, forest which are, after all, its reason for existing, and he has been left wanting. When dark rumors began to reach the lord of the Black Fortress of a monstrous horde rising in the east and crushing all before it, Rezoeth consulted the flames and embers of Hashut's sacrificial altars for what they portended. He saw in them both dire peril and opportunity in the coming of Tamarkan, and so with the malefic intent that so characterizes his cold-hearted race, he drew his plans accordingly. You can already kind of tell that there's a lot going on here with Drazoeth, and the weird thing about the Tamarcon, and I've said this before when we talked about Elspeth, there's a lot of just like run-on sentences. I mean, when you read the lore, it's like, it's it's overly gaudy, and it's very dense. Like, I mean, this is the first sentence uh, of Drazoeth. This is from, from the beginning, first word, the first period. Just to give you guys an idea of like, how kind of over the top it is. For more than a thousand years, a dark burning spire of the Black Fortress has stood sentinel over the crossing place of the river ruin at the southern edge of the mountains of morn and the guarded the border of the chaos dwarf empire of ash and suffering like oh holy shit what did i just go what did i just get through so 
bear with me as we kind of kind of lumber our way through the Tamarcon here and there when we talk about the Chaos Dwarfs or we talk about some of like the Chaos um, Siege Giants that we'll talk about when we talk about some of the Chaos Demons. So again, I just want to say bear with me when we can come to those lore blurbs because they can be a little uh, pedantic, they can be a little bit dense, but I do want to get them across because they're, they're important to... to you know, what my channel is about, which is lore. <laughs> and I think that you guys really kind of enjoy what, what this is, how this is written. So let's go and do some of these special rules of Drazo with the Ashen here. So we're going to talk about specifically his special rules as a Chaos Dwarf. And he's got three specific ones, Resolute, Relentless, and Contempt. Every single Chaos Dwarf has these special rules. And what we'll kind of look at here is how these can possibly be put into Total War Warhammer. Um, resolute basically means that whenever it comes to fleeing or pursuing something, they they are, go a little bit slower at it. So the, basically, the Chaos Dwarves fight with grim malice and determination and are reluctant to abandon their position on the battlefield. Maybe this is kind of portrayed in the sense of um, they're less likely... Or, well, you know what? Actually, I'm sorry. I, I'm thinking of a different one. Um, when... Skaven flee, they get an increase to speed, right? Well, maybe if the Chaos Dwarfs flee, they flee at a slower rate. Their, their, their speed drops as kind of like a, a grim malice and determination, as the book says. Like their, their want to abandon their position, even in the face of outright fear and, and breaking of leadership. So if they flee, their leadership does drop. Or I'm sorry, their uh, speed drops. So yeah, maybe they're an easier target now for Calvary, but at the same time, they're more likely to, to come back at this point because they're staying within range of your of your lords. They're not running very, very far if they do come back, so they can get back to the fight a little bit quicker. That I think would be a really cool way to do Chaos Dwarfs is kind of this 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 faction that is, you know, penultimate to the dwarves themselves as far as like the, the, the masters of defense and kind of staying the line here. And they have this other rule, Relentless. Chaos Dwarfs are implacable and relentless when on the attack and are scornful on the ability of anyone, of the ability of anyone or anything to stop them. And basically what this means is that um, they don't take leaderships, when a leadership test when it comes to marching. Now that obviously isn't a situation here in Total War Warhammer, but maybe they have a reduced vigor loss since they are this kind of like relentless, always pursuing their enemy type uh, race and that they, they anytime they get into conflict they're there until the bitter end so maybe that's how they kind of face this by being uh, they have way less reduction in vigor for normal actions that would say reduce the vigor of other units uh, say of empire or any other faction for that matter they just have that 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 vigor loss reduction now the last rule here contempt chaos dwarfs despise all other forms of life and see them as nothing more than contemptible fodder to the exploited and disposed of as needed they expect their lessers to show cowardice and weakness in battle and be restrained only through fear. Now, this is a pretty interesting one. Basically, though, um, the way I would kind of really see this is that anytime any they don't suffer leadership issues from their friends fleeing or 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 being terror routed or fear routed. That's the way I would kind of look at contempt. That they, since they kind of look at their peers as kind of beneath them in, in their own kind of like narcissistic way, I think that contempt could be a really cool ability to just say, hey, yeah, um, other other bros fearing won't cause like a fear chain, or I'm sorry, um, routing won't cause a route chain with chaos dwarves. They'll kind of hold the line as a, and it's kind of again that repeating motif of of the chaos dwarves always going to be able to just stay the line. I, I kind of like that. As a, as a nice little touch for them. And I, we, we get a, a nice set of rules here for their, their special rules. Every single race has got these special rules. Um, like the High Elves have the ability to always strike first. Same with the, what else? And the Dark Elves. But High Elves also get like their murderous prowess. Or I'm sorry, Dark Elves get murderous prowess and High Elves get their martial prowess. So every race does have these special rules that only applies to them. I think how that's how I think the Chaos Dwarf form would work. Who knows? You know, I could be wrong. These are basically bar stools with horns, so who knows? But the Drezoweth is a caster. He's a, he's a hybrid caster engineer, if you want to think of him as a dwarf uh, engineer lord caster. It's really weird, because remember guys, Chaos Dwarfs don't have runesmiths in the way that dwarfs do. They actually do use the lore of Hasha, the lore of, lore of uh, metal, the lore of fire. Um, in specific, Drezoweth the Ashen uses the lore of Hashut. He's a level four mage, I want to say. I, I saw it on here earlier, but I can't see it now. But he's a demon smith. Now, what that means is that he is immune to psychology, and he has two special abilities attached to him. 
uh, Infernal Engineer and Sorcerer's Curse. Now, remember how I said he was kind of like uh, a engineer? Well, an Infernal Engineer basically means that he would give an accuracy bonus or maybe an AP increase bonus to any kind of engine or, or, or war machine in a radius around him, kind of barring directly from what we already see with engineers. And on top of it, the Sorcerer's Curse. Now, we haven't talked much about how magic works in the Chaos Dwarf realm, but basically anytime a Chaos Dwarf casts a spell, he turns to stone slowly, slowly especially if he screws up. So the way it's represented on a tabletop is if he gets a miscast, and he suffers wound, but also gets stronger. He gets gains toughness because his skin is turning literally to, to stone. So what I think would be kind of cool is for these guys, if I don't really know or have seen much about mist casts in Total War Warhammer in the scope of tabletop. In tabletop, you can lose a caster outright. If you screw up a mist cast, your guy, your guy could be just dead out, immediately explode. Now I've never seen that in Total War Warhammer. I have heard that the mist cast damage is present and it does it does it is there and there are items that increase miscast chance and so on and so forth but i think for total war warhammer 3 we have to revamp that miscast table even more because with chaos demons coming into this miscasts are a big part of their army so i really want them to be kind of overhauled for this and if they are because again chaos dwarfs have that as a part of their casting i want miscast to have these these kind of punishments you know oh it does some damage to the caster in the event of a miscast but also makes him it increases his melee or his armor not his melee defense but maybe his armor i'd really love to see them kind of overhaul the miscast because they, they've nailed so many good things about total war warhammer one two soon to be three but i think they they really dropped the ball at the miscast table because the miscast table is so random and so hectic and so punishing in uh the tabletop so i want to see them kind of overhaul that um, following on to his special rules, he also has Dark Renown, which basically would just give him a um, leadership bonus to any unit around him. I would, just a very small static one, maybe like a plus eight or something like that. Uh, the way the Dark, Dark Renown rule works is it adds plus one to the combat resolution when within 12 inches of uh, Drazoweth, if you are familiar with the tabletop rules. Well, let's jump into his magic items, because he's got three magic items, all really great high potential for just being simple quest items here. So he's got the Hell Shard Amulet, which is a talisman. The dark product of Drazoeth's own labors and diabolic craftsmanship, the icy hate of his malice is caught and amplified by a thousandfold within its black crystal depths and unleashed on any who would dare spill his blood. Really simple here. Uh, he just gives him, it gives him a, a five up ward save. So I'd see this as maybe a 10% or a 5% ward save in Total War Warhammer. But another cool thing here, as you can hear from the lore, anytime he suffers a wound, or gets hurt for that matter, he does damage back, a, a very small strength, strength to hit, back to whoever inflicts the damage. So I would kind of like to see reactive effects kind of come into play. We already kind of have it with Lore of Life, but basically adding some sort of damage shield to some characters here and there, as represented by their magic items, or by spells here on, or uh, so on and so forth. Something that kind of really gives that that nod back, because there are a lot of things, especially with, with things like Chaos Spawn, or some of the larger, creepier Skaven things, that it hurts you if you hurt them. So I think we do need to see that, especially as we get to Total War Warhammer 3. Maybe that could play into some of the kiss of special rules of uh, maybe their lore attribute for, for lore of ice, or maybe it could play into their army rules, or I'm not really sure how that would work, but I think there needs to be more reactive items that, that have an effect if you do damage to the individual, because again, it's such a large part of tabletop. His other two, one of his other two items though, is the Demon Spite Crucible, an arcane item. Forged from meteoric iron and blighted gold, quenched in innocent blood and bound with layer upon layer of hell-bound souls, the Demon Spike Crucible is said to have been the handiwork of the ancient Chaos Dwarf Asgor himself. And this would basically kind of be like, um, not like an arcane conduit, but there are a lot of abilities that kind of increase uh, winds of magic or give a quick boost to winds of magic. This would be very similar to that. Uh, but it has, a, it has an additional cool little effect to it that Anytime Drazoeth or his mount, Cinderbreath, kills an enemy wizard, it gives him some more. So maybe it would be cool if, it, if he could either use this as an ability on a lord, a caster, and it would drain winds of magic. Or if he did actually have a, if you kill, it gives the rewards ability for, for sorcerers. That, that would be cool, but that's so 
unlike anything we've seen in the game right now, I don't think it would happen. I think draining winds of magic would be a little more likely rewarding winds of magic for killing something. I haven't seen anything similar to that. And if you guys do know, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know, but I've not seen anything like that so far. But his last item, the Graven Spectre, or Scepter. Holy shit, I swear to God I can read and write. It's a magic weapon, if you didn't guess that by the word scepter, but a badge of rank carried by the Lords of the Black Fortress. This iron staff mace carries the runic name of the Masters of the Black Fortress since its founding, bound up with the baleful prayers of Hashut. Basically, this thing just base always hits on a four up, and it doesn't really matter what the what the, uh, the enemy's toughness is. So maybe this would just be a high AP weapon, increasing his AP maybe by a 30 or 40 percent on an activatable, or maybe just an, an innate increase to his AP. So he's he's mainly passing through armor, doing direct damage to the opponent. I mean, Dresoleth is not a slouch. He does have a very high weapon skill, a high toughness of a five. I mean, he's got a lot of wounds decent amount of attack so he is kind of that weird synthesis between a dwarf i'll say thane rather than lord because he's not you know very 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 good in combat um he's got the engineer capabilities he's got he's got the casting abilities of other classes so he's this very cool kind of hybrid that we see in a lot of the main lords and characters especially of total war warhammer 2 right we see with Malekith, we've got him as a caster kind of hybrid. Skrulk is definitely a, a he is a caster, but it seems more like a hybrid because of his, his propensity for really just being a shithead. Uh, but we see all these other characters who are these hybrids, and it kind of plays very heavily into that. And I think he's going to be really fun when he does come to Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, he does have his really cool center breath, Great Taurus, which is his, as you can see from these pictures, a giant bull with huge wings. Now this is a Bale Taurus, meaning that it is pale, of course, Bale, pale. <laughs> it's like kind of like white, okay? Like an off-white color. So he does have some special abilities we want to talk about really quick here. One is Blazing Body. It just means that he has flaming attacks and he does fire damage to everything around him, which I think would be really cool, right? We see Frostbite and we see the Frostworm have its kind of um, abilities to do damage, about, or I'm not sorry, uh, slow things around it. I'd love to see something like Blazing Body, where it does a little bit of fire damage to everything around it. So getting the Great, Tar or the Great Taurus into combat would be extremely beneficial to you, and obviously causing terror and fear if it has both of those. In the tabletop, he has terror, but I think it'd be really, really kind of cool. Also, he has Fueled by Fire, which basically means that he can't be wounded by lower fire. Um, I, I would extend that to he can't be wounded by flaming attacks or lower fire, period, if we're talking about Total War Warhammer. And also that he has, uh, he can actually get, retain or regain wounds when he suffers uh, attacks from the lower fire. Now, I don't know if flaming attacks would heal him. I think that'd be kind of cool, but again, I haven't seen anything like that in, the lore, in, in Total War Warhammer. And to be honest, there's very few things that are like that in tabletop. Uh, Tamarcon was released by Forge World, which was kind of, it's had this, it has this weird history. Now it's actually a direct part of Games Workshop, but at one point, Forge World was this kind of weird stepchild to Games Workshop that did a lot of its independent things, could carry its its IPs and, and use its brand, but it wasn't the same thing overall. It's kind of gone in and out of that spectrum throughout its lifetime. So a lot of the special rules for things from Forge World are a little of like that, like that fanfic approach to things of like, hey, how awesome would it be if this happened? Oh yeah. Let's make a fucking rule about that, dude. Let's make a bowl that's on fire with giant balls that are fiery. Fire ball bowls. Bowls balls that are on fire. Shit. Not editing that out. That's staying there. But that's what I mean. It's like, a lot of these rules are going to be quirky. They're going to be a little weird. I mean, we talked about Elspeth, and Elspeth had a little bit of a quirk to her. So be kind of ready for that as we talk about more and more of the Chaos Dwarves. And if you're kind of wondering how the Chaos Dwarves are going to play, think of Dwarf meets Empire meets beasts from Warriors of Chaos. So, you know, you've got your Bull Centaurs, you've got your Kadai, but then you've got, you know, Iron Demon War Engines, like these giant-ass cannons. You've got these rocket batteries that are essentially um, Chaos Dwarf rocket batteries. You've got Magma Cannons, which are basically kind of a little bit different than, well, I guess not much different than a Flame Cannon from the, from the Chaos Dwarf roster. But a Death Shrieker rocket launcher. So you've got a d d Dreadquake Mortar. So again, that synthesis of empire dwarf and beasts from warriors of chaos if you want to really get it get your mind around this also maybe low tier troops from greenskins because they, they have hobgoblins and hobgoblin slaves and they're not 
overly reliable, that's for sure. They, they have actually Hobgoblin Wolf Riders too, which is kind of nifty. But that's to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're going to be getting into as we talk more and more about the Chaos Dwarfs. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here today talking about Drazoeth the Ashen. If you have any questions or anything you want to hear more about the Chaos Dwarfs, do let me know. I know we got kind of a, a shot in the gut here over the past week with the news about no real Lord pack coming out until 2019. But that doesn't mean campaign pack, guys. Remember, they did release that they're, they're working on a campaign pack, and that's hopefully going to be coming out here before year's end. I, I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping we're going to get something before um, what, in the next seven or six months, five months here. So I'm hoping that something kind of breaks through to the other side and we can get that going. Um, outside of that, though, I will I will at least try to continue that that hype train towards Total War Warhammer 3 and hope to give you guys some, some more content throughout the um, coming months and such. But this week, I'll be covering another, nightly, another set of nightly orders. I believe I'll be doing... Um, I have Knights of Moor on there and the Reichsguard, or or maybe it's Reichsguard and uh, or the White Lions. Well, either one. You'll be it'll be some fun stuff. I think those are the two that won out. Also, we'll be covering some uh, other 40k lore. We'll get some more quick battles going up on the channel. I want to get a lot more of those out again, and we'll have another uh, legendary lord video here for Kislev. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and leave a comment below. But have a good one and take care.